Hi there, and welcome to another computer tutoring training session. Now this time we're going to have a look at the mid function. Now this can be used in conjunction with the left function and the right function, and the purpose of which is to extract text, basically to get text out of one cell so you can prepare it or mash it for a pivot table or some sort of Power BI visualization. Now we're going to use this in Excel. I have Excel 2016 open, and we're going to get started right, right away. Now, let's suppose a particular scenario that somebody's given you a list of addresses. So let's have a look at the addresses, shall we? So you can open any spreadsheet and type it in. I'm going to type in a heading of address in A1. I encourage you to do the same. And then we're going to write in an address. So I'm going to type 72 Bridge Road, comma, London, comma, W67JJ. Now the purpose here is we want to extract London here or whatever city from the list between the two commas. That's what we need to extract. So how do we do that? Well, in order to be able to get that information, we're going to be taking advantage of the three basic functions. We're going to take advantage of the mid function. We're going to take advantage of the substitute function. And we're also going to be taking advantage of the find function. So let's just type these functions up here, shall we? So we've got the mid function. We're just going to find beginning. We need to find the first comma here. We need to find the end. Okay, and then here I will explain the substitute function uh, that we'll use to find the end. And if we get opportunity as well, we'll also use the trim function to solve any problems of extra spaces that people might have typed just before or after the name of the town. Okay, so basically let's talk about the mid function. How does that work? We'll take your mouse, click on cell B2, and we're going to type in equals MID for mid. So MID mid. Now that takes three arguments, the mid function, as you can see here, you've got the text that you want to get the text out of basically, or extract the text from the start number, which is when you need to find where you want to start and the number of characters. So how many characters across do you want to uh, extract the text from? So say for instance, we weren't using any other functions so we can understand the basics of the mid function. This is how it would work. I would click on the text in A2, because that's the text we want to extract the uh, mid bit text, the town from. Then I'll type in a comma for my second argument. My start number would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If I said 15, it would include the comma. So I want 16, so it includes the L in London. So it starts on 16. And then how many characters do I want to move across? Well, I want London has six letters in it. So I'm going to type in six, close my bracket and press enter. And you can see I have London there. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? But the problem is, is what happens if you have an address such as this? 33 High Street. Oops, Street. Uh, in Cambridge. CB 14 8 H H. Great. So you think, oh, I'll get my mid function and I will auto fill it down. And as you can see, there is a little problem. Uh, if you look, in fact, when I look at the word street and the gaps and everything, it's actually started the same. It started really well. In fact, if I type in, um, let's have a look here. It's for Aikman street in Cambridge. Let's take that. Brilliant. So now you can see the commas in the wrong position. The Cambridge is not there. Obviously, setting hard code values in like 16 and 6 here isn't going to solve the problem. What I need to do is find that first comma. And that's where we would find the beginning. So let's do that, shall we? We'll do that for London and then we'll auto fill it down for the rest of them and then we'll see if it works there. So we're going to find beginning there. So Let's find the first character here. So the way the, the function works or the way that the find function works is it's equals find open bracket. Now we're going to look for a particular type of text. So the text we're going to look for is the comma. So it's the comma that we're looking for. Then we type a comma in for our next argument. 
and it's within text A2. Then do another comma to do our last argument and it's our starting number. And then we close bracket and then we press enter. So there we have 15. Now if you remember from London here that we wanted it as 16. You see the problem with this function is, it's not really a problem, but when you look at it here, you can see that it's finding the position of this comma. Well, we don't want the position of that comma. We don't want to include that comma in our name. We want the position after the comma. So the way that we solve this problem is just add one to it, plus one. There we go. So that's the beginning. So now we can incorporate this formula into here, basically into this formula. So instead of saying 16, what I'm going to do just to start off with is I'm going to highlight the 16 here in the formula bar. So you can see how I've highlighted number 16 up here in the uh, in the formula bar. So I've highlighted that and then I'm going to click on C2 just here and then press enter. And I can see it started off with London. And if I um, come to autofill both of these down here, make sure I autofill the find beginning and I can see that this comma starts on 17, I add one, it's 18, so it starts off with Cambridge. Hopefully that makes sense with, uh, to you. Great, so that's the easy part done with. The next stage is to find the end. So how do we do that? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to find this second comma. That is how it is separated. Another word for separation is to be delimited. That's the, sec the delimiter is comma, it's the second comma. So can we look for the, well, no, we can't use the find one generally on its own because it's going to be looking for commas. So enter the substitute function. So let us, me show you what the substitute function does and then we can employ it to find the end point. Uh, okay, and then we can then use that to know how many characters that we've, uh, we're moving across. So just gonna click in here and type in equals substitute and press tab on the keyboard to finish the formula. So what I'm looking for here is um, a number of different arguments. In fact, there's four arguments there. Let me just zoom in so you can see. There's four arguments. There you've got the text here. That's the first one where you want to get the text from. You've got the old text, which is the comma we're going to be looking for. The new text, which is going to be some character that we wouldn't ordinarily use. I suggest the little wavy line. I think it's known as the tilde character. And the instance number on this one is which, which one do we want to convert? Which comma do we want to change to a tilde? So let's just zoom back so I can type the formula in. So the first thing is the text. Well, the text is here, comma. The old text is the comma. The new text is the tilde. So it's this character here. And the instance number is going to be number two. So in other words, I want the second comma here to be changed into a tilde. I press enter on the keyboard. And if you look closely, just might move myself out of the way here so I can just zoom in. So if you look closely now, you see the first comma is now a comma, yeah. But the second comma is a tilde, it's one of those wavy lines. Please correct me if they're not known as the tilde in, in your part of the world, but that's how I refer to it. Great, so now what I can do is I can use the find function to look for that particular character. So let's do that, shall we, to find the end. So I'm going to click in the find end, type equals find, open bracket. I'm going to find the text um, tilde, comma, okay, and I want to find that, just clicking the way here, so I want to find that, I'm just going to point to this se separate E tool too, they know these as, um, as helper cells here, but eventually at the end of this video I'll bring them all together, you might be able to work that one out yourself, but if not then please stay to the end and I'll show you how you can consolidate or bring all of those formulas together. Excellent. So the next argument there is find text within this text here. Great. That's within E2. And then I'll type in a comma for the next part of the argument here. And then start number one and close brackets. Okay. So it's looking for the tilde within E2, which has got the substitute function. So I can then see it's got 22 in there because that tilde 
is well this comma here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 okay that's great so how then do we know what we need to do is then go back to this mid function now do you remember the mid function the last argument is not the end it's not the start number and the end number if it was then that would be fantastic but it's not it is the start number okay well basically it's the number of characters so basically we can work that out by taking the end and then minusing the beginning so let's do that shall we so i'm just going to press escape okay i'm just going to make this a little wider here brilliant and then i'm going to say number of characters over here brilliant and then the formula is very straightforward equals d2 minus c2 and I press enter and I can see there's a number of characters brilliant so hopefully that makes sense and at the moment it is working for instance the last bit I can do here is I could point for instance to this function here which is based on a couple of these functions here but what I need to do now is I need to consolidate and bring all those functions together so I don't need all the C D E and F helper cells that I can just do it in one so all I want to get is the name of the city so let's see if we can do that one so the first one uh, c2 uh, so what we, i'm going to do here is going to take c2 so we can know the beginning it's quite straightforward i'm going to copy that go back here to this function highlight c2 i'm going to paste and press enter brilliant so you can see that i've instead of the c2 if i zoom in so i can show you i've got the find function with the little plus one on the end there and it's still working if I auto fill it down I can still see that it's working there except for it's just going down uh, yeah to the next ones here brilliant okay so that's the find beginning uh, the find end So remember the find end is a combination of this one here and this substitution one here so what I need to do is where it says E2, where it says E2 there, I just need to put in the substitute formula that I've got on E2. So let's just see if I can highlight that. Just got to be careful here. Make sure you highlight exactly what you need and don't highlight the equal sign at the beginning. Copy that. I'm going to press escape to come out of that because I don't want to change that for the time being. I'm going to click on find end, find my E2 just here and highlight the E2 just being careful and then paste my formula within the E2 press enter and I can still see that I've got my 22 here if I then auto fill that one down I can see that that has there as 27 so far so good so that's the end point but remember I don't want just the end I want to know how many characters remember the number of characters here so if I just auto fill that one down, I can see this is nine characters. This is six characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, Cambridge has nine letters in it. That's great. So what I need to do is in the eight to find in the end position or in the number of characters here, I just need to include, take basically this away from this. So that's what I need to do here. So I need to take this away from this so I've got this number already here so let's try this first one so I'm gonna click on uh, the end here and type uh, actually before I do that I'm just going to click on this and highlight this function just here and copy it escape to get out of it click on the end here and then I'm going to minus and then paste back this function which is the beginning there I'm gonna press enter okay and notice it comes up an extra character here which is kind of strange this one it doesn't seem to make sense it should have been six but for some reason it's eight that's because I'm, I'm taking one away from another I no longer need certain parts of this calculation so for instance if you want to start analyzing a calculation to see how it's getting to a certain result you can do no worse than go up to the formulas tab here at the top and then if I zoom in and show you there's a button that says evaluate formula now what does that do so make sure you've got this here selected and click on evaluate formula and then what that does is it takes you it brings a formula up but every time you click on this evaluate button down at the bottom it will take you step 
by step through the function and through the formula. So let's have a look, quick look and see what it does. So the first part of the formula here is it's going to do this substitute here to try and work out where this tilde comes from. And then it's going to, so it's actually substituted that one there. I'm gonna click there and it's found it that's at 22, that's great. Then it's going to look at A2 and trying to work out the beginning part of it, which is great. And then notice there as the part of the formula, it's doing 22 minus 15 first, which is getting seven plus one, which is eight. Now, obviously this is the wrong way around. I need to make sure that it's going to, if I just restart and go through the formula just again. So I need to make sure that it takes away the numbers first here before it takes it away from the 22. So how do I do that? So if I go here, what I need to do is really 15 plus one, and then take that away from 22, which would lead six. So how do I do that? Well, if you remember back at your school days, or if you're still at school looking at this, then you might have uh, remembered a little arithmetic truth called bod mass or operator preference. So what that basically means is if I just zoom in uh, just at the top here and show you, this find function, I need to make sure that this one is calculated before it subtracts from this second or the, the first part of the formula just here. So I do that by surrounding it with brackets. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to build brackets open and at the end, a bracket to close. I press enter and you can see it comes up as a six. If you're thinking, well, how is it coming to that six? Click on the formula, go to uh, click on D2 where the formula is, click on evaluate formula button at the top and as you click evaluate, I'll get to the uh, relevant point here, there we go. So now it's 22 minus, now before it does any minusing here, we want to calculate um, this part of the function here first. That's what we want to calculate first. So I'm going to click on evaluate again, evaluate again, so now we see 15 plus 1 and now it's 22 minus 16 which is uh, minus 16, which comes up with the six. That's how it gets the six there. Great, so I'm going to close that. So far, so good. In fact, if I just auto fill that down a little bit as well, I can see that that's nine and that's making sense there. I can see the number of characters being reflected here as well, it's coming up. So almost there, just bear with us just for a couple of mo moments here. Now what we need to do is include this whole function inside this mid function here. So at the moment in time, I've set this as six. So instead of it being six, I'm going to copy all of this formula here across. And let me just zoom in so you can absolutely make sure that you're copying the right bit. So it's the whole formula, except for the equal sign at the beginning there, we are going to highlight and copy. So just copy that, control C press escape to come out of that, go back to the mid here and we're going to highlight the six. So if I zoom in so you can see that one, just highlight that six at the beginning there and then we are going to paste our whole formula back and then we'll press enter. So now you can see that is all of this formula is being used. There is no helper cells that are required. Quite a neat trick, eh? Just to prove if I auto fill down here, I can see my Cambridge comes up absolutely fine and now I can actually get rid of all of these helper cells I don't need them the formula is there so if I just move myself back over here now let's just say for instance with this just change some of them make it a little bit difficult uh, so if I go back here and somebody says well I'll tell you what I live in Milton Keynes if you've heard of Milton Keynes no problem there we go it extracts Milton Keynes well, let's say, for instance, there's another problem. Let's go back to this London here, and somebody has accidentally added a space before the L in London. And you see the space comes up here in the mid. It's, oh. So this is where you can use another function, a function known as trim. A very straightforward, easy to use function, and we can use it just here. All we need to do, if I double click, is to surround the whole function here all of those extra functions with the trim function. So I'm starting off with trim, open bracket, going back to the end and use a close bracket to close off that function there. Press enter on the keyboard and then you can see it doesn't matter how many spaces somebody's added before London, it extracts just London. And that data will be perfect for your pivot tables, your visualizations in Power Pivot and, and, and Power BI. So just to recap, 
we have used the mid function, we have used the find function, and we have used the substitute uh, function to, and then took one away from the other. You may need to watch this video a couple of times and I will provide a completed exercise file as well so that you can look at the function as well. More videos can be found on our website on computertutoring.co.uk and please if you've enjoyed this video please like it, give it a good old like and subscribe to our channel and if you feel that you have any other training requirements then please contact us about a classroom based training course. Thank you so much for watching.